Hey, everyone. Welcome to our Bleacher Report breakdown of our latest bracket for Bleacher Report and the March Madness Men's Basketball social media accounts and, of course, NCAA.com. I'm Andy Katz. All right, so we are in the final few days of February. What does that mean? March is around the corner. we got conference tournaments actually starting at the end of next week. Crazy. We're already here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to break down our top seeds, go through the bracket region by region, take your questions, Go our last teams in and so on. But I want to say one thing in general first, which is all this chatter about expanding the field. There are a lot of bracketologists out there. Anyone can do this. When you look at it, I think we would all agree the back part of the bracket is kind of weak and it feels like it's getting weaker each year. And it makes you wonder if you expand beyond 72, I don't even think you should, but 72, 96, and beyond. You're really struggling to get teams that should be in a postseason tournament. That's number one. Number two, you got to earn this. Uh, you have to, this has to mean something. And every team has an opportunity in this season to get this bid. Now, not every team qualifies for their conference tournament. I know that. Uh, that will change, that will become even more prevalent next year with expanded conferences, but you have a chance to qualify for your conference tournament. You should earn it. And expanding the field does not make it better. And keep in mind, Turner and CBS don't have to open their contract to give more money. So I'm not really for it right now. I want to put that out there. Number one seeds, Purdue, Arizona, Houston, UConn. Four number one seeds, Staying true at this point, okay? There's your order on your bottom of your screen of how I've played them out on our seed list. Purdue, Houston, UConn, Arizona. So what does that mean? If it were to hold in Phoenix, Purdue versus Arizona, Houston, UConn. That would be your final four. So let's dive right into it. The Midwest bracket. Purdue is the number one overall seed. It is Midwest versus West. So we got Mer Purdue <clears throat> as your one, Merrimack, Grambling, your 16. TCU, Florida Atlantic. Um, this is interesting here because let's take a look at right at TCU. Uh, they've been all over the map. Beat Houston at Baylor, at K-State. You know, these worst losses are in the Big 12. Big game coming up at BYU. TCU is going to be in. It's all a seating issue for them. FAU is the one that really is a head scratcher. Um, you know, FAU is trending the wrong direction, okay? Uh, they just lost to Memphis and, you know, got them in the nine spot. But I think their hold on its spot is a little tenuous. I think it's really critical they keep winning here down the stretch. They are no, in no means to, to me is FAU an absolute lock to make it. So just keep an eye on the Owls. They're good enough to win games, to get back, maybe not to the Final Four, but certainly win games in March. But they got to get there, and they are trending in the wrong direction right now. Dayton, Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon and Tarleton State right now in the whack. Jocelyn for the top spot. Grand Canyon's hit a little bit of a bump. Dayton is interesting. Their metrics say they're a five. But right now, Dayton is behind Loyola, Chicago, and Richmond in the A-10. Now, you can get in without winning your league. We've seen that. Go back to when Washington didn't even win. When they won the Pac-12, didn't even get in. So Dayton's metrics say they're a five. They're struggling a little late. They lost to George Mason. Big game Friday night at Loyola, Chicago. Again, I don't know if Dayton can hold that five spot. San Diego State, Akron would be a grinder. Oh, my God, that would be such a physical game if that were to occur. I think San Diego State's... Right there on that four line. Utah State <clears throat> and Boise and San Diego State right now at the top of the Mountain West. Indiana State, again, barely holding on to this position. Now, we got them as the AQ here out of the Valley. But that's going to be really an interesting tournament with Drake, UNI, that's Northern Iowa, Bradley, Southern Illinois. Um... I hope Indiana State can get there because they had a great year. They can win games in this tournament. Baylor, solid three-line, I think. Irvine, we'll see if they can get out of the Big West. 
bottom part of the East, or excuse me, Midwest. Washington State split their trip to Arizona, get the win over the Wildcats. They got a sweep over Arizona. Lost at ASU. If they had beaten ASU, I think they're up on that six line, maybe. It's interesting, though. You got Arizona won, and right now Arizona is tied for the lead with Washington State in the Pac 12, but wouldn't be the number one seed because the Cougars swept them. Wake goes into that 10 line after a great week week of beating Pitt and Duke. Hunter Salas was our National Player of the Week. Tennessee and Colgate wrap up the bottom. So here is Wake Forest. Um, Florida and Duke at home, great wins. You know, these losses aren't bad, uh, but this is a big week coming up. So like I said, I have Wake solidly in as a 10. But at Notre Dame, at Virginia Tech, I think you got to beat Notre Dame. Like, that'd be a bad loss. Virginia Tech blew out Virginia. I think they got to sp- split that week. All right, so now let's go to the West. So remember, it's Midwest versus West in this scenario because we've got our top seed is Purdue and our fourth number one is Arizona. So that's why you match up the Midwest and the West. Arizona, the one. These are the metrics here. Eastern Kentucky, um, Michigan State, Texas. So I struggle with Michigan State because the metrics say they're in that 8-9, but I think you could put the Spartans on the 10 line. If someone wanted to put them on the 10 line, I would have no issue with that. They've lost again at home, this time to Ohio State. Lost to Iowa at home. Those all happened in the last two weeks. Um, They're not going to... I'd be shocked if they win at Purdue. Here's what Michigan State has down the stretch. At Purdue, they've got um, home Northwestern. I'll be for that. And then they're at Indiana. It would behoove the Spartans to win two of those three to make sure they stay out of Dayton, let alone make sure they're in this field. Texas, I I just feel like they're going to be in that 8-9. Kentucky, um, the metrics put them on the five. The way they play, they should be a three or a four. Uh, we'll see if that happens. Great wins over Auburn on the road, home Alabama. In the middle of that, they lost at LSU. Princeton right now, not over Yale. Princeton's interesting because they've got only three losses. If they were to lose in an Ivy League final, I don't think they'd get in, but it would be great to see if they did because they're more than capable of winning games. Creighton is now at that four line after beating UConn. Yes, they lost at St. John's, but that's okay. App State, that's a date, that's a dangerous team right there in the tournament. South Carolina, six line, their metrics say they're there. They're going to be solidly in that three, four, five range in the SEC, probably. There's South Florida. Got them as the AQ out of the American. Um, here's what's going to be interesting. Can South Florida <clears throat> get to comfortably in as an at-large if they don't win the tournament. That's what's going to be interesting to watch with South Florida. Uh, And then Duke, high point. Duke is a three. Those are the metrics. Yes, they lost a wake. They got Virginia at home and Carolina at home. Interesting to see how that plays out. Um, Here's South Carolina. They're going to be in. It's all about, like, a four quad one wins. It's all about whether or not they move up on the seed line. Bottom part of this bracket in the West, St. Mary's and Boise, Kansas, Eastern Washington. This would be a good bracket for Kansas, by the way. St. Mary's, I think, can move up if they get another win over Gonzaga, win out, maybe win the conference tournament. They could get up to a five. They don't have great metrics outside the WCC, But if St. Mary's goes undefeated and wins the conference tournament and the regular season, I could see them on that five line. Boise right now trending three in a row in the Mountain West. Um, Let's go to the south. And this would be Houston and Yukon. Southeast. Houston taking on the winner of South Dakota State, Norfolk State. Houston right now, last week, our national team of the week, beat Iowa State 
at home, get the split, one at Baylor in overtime. I think they are solid as a one. Solid. Clemson and Richmond. Um, that'd be so here we have Richmond getting the AQ out of the A10. Dayton is the at large. So I want to play this out for you. Yes, I have Loyola Chicago in my power 36, but for this scenario, we went with Richmond getting an AQ. So I want you to understand when I'm doing this, we are throwing in some AQs that are stealing bids, which we have with Richmond. We have South Florida joining FAU. So two out of the American, two out of the A-10. That's what I'm doing because that's going to that's going to happen. They're going to be bid stealers. Here's Illinois on the four line. I think they're a solid four. Could they get to a three? Maybe. Sanford's a little dicey. That'll be dangerous. Same league as Chattanooga. And that league has uh, certainly had some uh, upset teams. Texas Tech on a six line. I think that's pretty where they're going to settle. Here's what's interesting. On the 11 line, New Mexico and Providence. I had New Mexico solidly in before they lost at home to Air Force. So the Lobos have lost three home games. Boise, UNLV, Air Force. That's not good. They're at Boise this week. It would behoove the Lobos to get that game. They cannot lose at home to Fresno in a week's time. Um, I hope they get in because they're a really entertaining team to watch. And I think they could win some games. Providence trending in the right direction as well. So right now, those are the last two teams I have in the field, New Mexico and Providence. Alabama coming off of the uh, road loss to Kentucky against Charleston. I think Alabama saw the on that three line. Northwestern, Ryan Langborg, the tra Princeton transfers, played well for them. Now in Ty Berry's absence. And Virginia, woo, that game be in the, that'd be like a 43-42 game. Um, so, but uh, with Northwestern, uh, that road win in Indiana was huge. Beating Michigan at home was big just to get wins. They got at Maryland. Then they are at Michigan State, and they are home against Minnesota. Virginia's at Duke coming up, so not good. Um, I say they make it, but they want to stay out of Dayton. And then Marquette in Oakland. Greg Campy has been there forever. That's great for him. He's done a great job in the horizon. And Marquette, like, can you imagine a Marquette-Houston Elite Eight? That game would be a grinder. Oh, my God. So physical. Two really good defensive teams. Cam Jones had a great week. 35 back-to-back -back games for the Golden Eagles. Tyler Kulik and Jamal Shedd would be a great matchup at the point. Virginia. There you saw. I mean, it's a little shaky right now. They can't crack 50. Um, all right. Let's go to the east where UConn is. We fully anticipate. Brooklyn, Boston. There's Cam Spencer, one of the best transfers in the country. Fairfield edging out Quinnipiac in the MAC. So it's a local game there in Brooklyn, two Connecticut based teams. Um, Oklahoma, Nebraska. So Nebraska up from a 10 to a 9. I think Nebraska could get to a 7. Nebraska wants to get to a 7 because Nebraska can win games. I don't think Nebraska can beat UConn, but Nebraska can get to the Sweet 16. It all depends on who they have in that first weekend. The Badgers and McNeese, oh boy, that would be a bad matchup for the Wisconsin Badgers. Um, McNeese with Shahada Wells, uh, they're really good. Will Wade's got them playing well. The Badgers need to win games. Can they get to a four? Sure, they still can. But um, that will be a tough matchup. Auburn, Vermont, um, you know, the Tigers, Tiger fans getting all over me that I did not have Auburn, Tennessee as one of my games to watch. Of course, it's a great game. But I'm trying to spread the wealth. And I got Tennessee, Alabama. And I got all these other games. And Auburn got blitzed at home by Kentucky. Yes, they beat Georgia. And I lowered Auburn in my power 36. So people are all fired up down in the jungle. Um, I still like this team a lot. Let's see what happens this week. I got them on the four line. Florida against Nevada, Seton Hall. Uh, that'd be two years in a row for Steve Alford's crew uh, in Dayton. Which, by the way, is not... Unusual because Bobby Hurley's Arizona State team played multiple years in the first four. Um, and well, how great would it be for Shaheen Holloway to be back with Seton Hall there? So Nevada, uh, 
they got five point one wins. Uh, they've done a great job at home. They, you know, they got to win some road games. It's gonna be hard to win one at Colorado State. They could get a sweep of the Rams. Got to beat Fresno. But I think they're going to be in, but they're now in that Dayton group. Iowa State, Louisiana Tech, this would be a great bracket for Iowa State, by the way. Again, um, I think if you look at this, BYU, Gonzaga, Carolina, Morehead State. So I've got Gonzaga in right now. So it's two teams of the WCC. BYU, Gonzaga, it's a WCC matchup. Now BYU in the Big 12. Um, but... I would love to see in this bracket a Carolina Iowa State Sweet 16. And you could have a Yukon Auburn, Wisconsin. Auburn, I guess. Here's BYU. Um, they're gonna be in. The Big 12 obviously has helped them. They've won home games. Um, you know, I don't I don't think they're gonna win in Kansas, but beat beat TCU. It's all about seeding for BYU right now. Um, all right, before we get to your questions, let's look at the last teams that didn't make my cut, and they're trending in the wrong direction right now. So Ole Miss, Colorado, Utah, Villanova, St. John's, Pitt, Cincy, Butler, Texas A&M, Iowa, and Drake. So here's Villanova. Three quad one wins. So look at this week coming up. Georgetown, got to win. At Providence. You know, win that game, you're back in the conversation. Let's look at another bubble team that's on the outside looking in. Syracuse. So Syracuse, now back in the picture. They got um, Virginia Tech coming up. I think that's a game that would be nice to win for them. Got to keep winning at home. Louisville, this is a good week for them to just keep winning games. And they could be a team, maybe win some games in the ACC, depending upon who they play. That would be critical for them. Uh, and I think that would change, uh, you know, what we think of them. All right, one more, and that's Colorado. Colorado, only one quad one win. You know, can't win on the road. Um to me, they're not in. You know, I mean, good players. K.J. Simpson, great player. They got to get, I think, to like the Pac-12 final. We'll see how the bracket breaks out. But, I mean, one quad one win is not going to get it done. All right, let's take some questions here. Would Dayton still make it even if Loyola won the A-10 tournament? Yes, Dayton's the only A-10 team that can get in as at large. Brandon Pierre says, can UNC get on the one line? Can they? Yes. They need Arizona to lose. And Carolina keep winning. Uh, Chili Dog, do I think Providence can get in? Yes, I've got them in Dayton. Got to keep winning. By the way, the Friars end the season hosting UConn. Wow. Um, B Mental, Michigan State as a 10 seed would wreck my brackets. I think they're trending that way. Unless you're talking about Mississippi State. Uh, Kansas would love to be in the region with Arizona as a shaky one. I agree. AJ Sandy, can Marquette get to a one seed? If they beat UConn twice, yes. So they got them at home and then in the Big East tournament, maybe. I think UVA would have a lower seed than New Mexico. Um, I wouldn't say that yet. Dre Day, Auburn would be an absolute scary four seed, have Final Four potential. That is true. Casey, McNeese State could upset some teams, would be a sneaker sleeper team. Will Wade, have, Will Wade has them playing well. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If McNeese State is playing Wisconsin, Ooh, it's all going to be matchups, but McNeese can get to a Sweet 16 depending on who they're playing. Any chance the Big Ten shows up in this tournament, Mad, jo Mad Josh asks, and I will say yes. Here's what I'm going to tell you about the Big Ten. If there are three teams that I have a lot of faith in in the Big Ten, this may surprise you. Purdue, no question. I think they get. I think they get to Glendale. Very similar to 2018-19 Virginia to Illinois. Illinois can definitely get to the second weekend and be on the doorstep. And I'm going to give you a third one. If Nebraska is on the 7-10 line, 7 or 10, I think Nebraska gets to the Sweet 16. 8-9, I'm not confident. 
because then they got to play a one. Seven ten, yes, I think Nebraska could get to the Sweet Sixteen. So we'll see. All right. Um, so it is. Oh, we went for quite a while here. Let me do some uh, housekeeping for you. We have two more weeks of our regular schedule. Monday, 1 o'clock Eastern, our AP Top 25 reaction, our Player of the Week, Team of the Week, Top 10 Games of the Week. Tuesday, 1 o'clock Eastern, our Bracket Breakdown. That is next week and then the week after the Champ Week, so March 11 and 12. Two more weeks of those, and then, of course, Selection Sunday and into March Tournament, Player of the Year, all that kind of stuff. But two more weeks of our regular scheduled programs on this app, 1 o'clock Eastern on Monday and Tuesday. As always, you can reach me. I know I take a lot of the hate on here at times. That's okay. Uh, at the Andy Cats on Twitter X, at the Real Andy Cats on Instagram. Follow us on the Bleacher Report app here on our men's basketball section, NCAA.com, and our men's basketball social media handle, March Madness MBB, for all our coverage. Appreciate the engagement. Thank you for your time this afternoon.